day two of disassembling and reconverting the blue van into a diesel. So my initial thing I have to do right now is cut off the catalytic converter, cut that pipe part way back with the sawzall, and I have to attach the Volkswagen downspout tube to it. There's the part I mean. I had to buy a new downspout but unfortunately they come with a big curve like this. That doesn't work because there isn't enough space between the rack and pinion to run that big curve down there. It hits the rack. So I cut off the curb, curve, re-welded it all and since I don't have a tube bender I sort of heated that up and made those gnarly looking bends to get a little bit more of the right angle on the pipe and then just welded it to the stock exhaust system on the Chrysler. So I've got lots of room to cut that any place I need to and re-weld it to that stock pipe down there. Now seeing the stain on the ground you can already see that I've refilled this tank now with diesel. There was about a gallon of gas still in there but that didn't matter I just mixed them it'll be fine. Now here's how I make the opening so it fits the larger diesel filler tube when you're at the fuel station. Ugh. And like I said before, it doesn't matter if the pieces fall into the tank. They're too big to be sucked up by anything. There, it's done. Nothing in the way. Now since this is a gas engine plumbed vehicle, I have to first purge the fuel lines of the gasoline that's in them to have the diesel coming through that I have in the tank now, so I don't get that into my diesel injector pump. And since I have all the battery wires removed, I've got the battery thrown in with a positive cable running to the B plus bus on the fuse box. I've taken the little cover off the relay that says fuel pump and now I just have to push this and I can hear it running and if you look closely it's filling up with gasoline right now soon to be mixed with diesel I'll just dump that back in the tank. And then I've got to replumb so it doesn't suck the fuel through the fuel pump. It sucks it through the drain port. Now I've got to crawl under the back and attach the siphoning out drain tube for the tank into the fuel line that feeds the line that goes up to the front of the vehicle that you just saw draining and completely bypass the fuel pump. And that is that little tube right there. And it's got to attach to the bigger one of those tubes. And then the other one that comes from the tank corked off. Well, now you can see the hose is unhooked. I got to attach to that middle tube, to that plastic tube with a piece of rubber hose. Done. And that was a five minute job. Okay, I just got done repairing the broken bolt in the power steering bracket and a bit of the broken off flange. So there's what Chrysler power steering looks like on a Volkswagen. The pump is on the opposite side. If it was Volkswagen the pump would be right there. It's a modified four cylinder Chrysler power steering bracket with an undercut piece in it to clear the axle when the suspension hits big bumps and the axle moves up. And it uses a Volkswagen timing belt tensioner for adjustment or it has adjustment in the normal way like a Chrysler does by swiveling the pump. Of course while it was in the air I put a new timing belt in since that one did over did have over a hundred thousand kilometers and I welded a little bit of strengthening on that motor mount that I made because I found a crack in it. Ready to go in. 
Should be running in a few hours. More of day two. Got the motor in now. It was just straightforward as dropping the, you know, as dropping a V6 back in. That diesel was all modified to fit one of these vans. There you can see lots of space. Easy to work on. We've got to do all the plumbing and wiring now. Put on the air cleaner box. Hook up the shifter cables. Got one axle in. Put the battery in. Slip the other axle in. Um, weld up the exhaust pipe right there where I've attached the, the diesel pipe to the original muffler from this fan. Now if I crawl underneath I'll show you the only modification to the vehicle that has to do with motor mounts. Oh, so there's the oil pan. Well, on the back of the transmission of the VW, you take out, there's a bolt hole. You can use it and put a bolt in there. And this is just a rubber motor mount with a steel collar around it that came off some other kind of car. So I attach that to the transmission. And I weld this little bracket on there to the frame, the K-frame of the minivan. And it's like a pocket motor mount. It's not actually attached to here. The rubber stops the vibrations from being transmitted to here. And the purpose of that is because the exhaust is only about that far from the frame. And when you're accelerating, the motor twists back by torque and the exhaust rubs on the frame. The other thing I had to do was the little tube that's part of the power steering of the rack just had to be bent down a half inch. So that's pretty simple. And as I've mentioned before, I converted the Volkswagen transmission to be a cable shift transmission. So you can see up there the cable holder brackets. And this is the drive plate for the axle I've got to install now. Other than the plumbing, she's pretty much almost ready to go. And the wiring. And now a diesel, all in one day. Factory. New dining belt. All ready for the road. Didn't really run into any problems, just the wiring was slightly different. Here's the clutch. Shifter's all in place. And everything works. Cool. Now for the speedometer. 